Okay, we've made it into the device manager and none of the multimedia stuff's working, so I need sound and video drivers. That might help with performance a bit, and that would explain why I haven't been getting a startup sound, so let's try installing some video and sound card drivers, if any are compatible. Theoretically, anything that works in Windows 7 should work in this preview, so let's just see how that works out. Okay, so rather than rather than download video drivers again, let me try just uh, seeing if this will work. Brought them over on a thumb drive. Let's see if that whole Windows 7 stuff works in Windows 8 thing is true. How come I'm not getting any resp Oh, it is responding. Ooh, plug and drive. Tap to choose what happens with removable drives. Tap? <laughs> this assumes I'm not using a mouse. Bad assumption. What should they do? Blah, 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 blah. Open the folder to view the files, you piece of crap. Okie dokie. So, where do we install? Ah, 12.1 Vista. Here's what we want. Go. Catalyst installer. This should work. Theoretically, this should work. Catalyst. Ah, oh, nice. It just looks all Windows 7-y with all the moving windows. Uh, let's see. C program files, ATI, etc., etc., etc. Express. Hope this makes things look better. Yes, create the f folder. <laughs> It's like the old joke, if Microsoft made cars, you'd get into an accident and a little window would pop up and ask you, are you sure, before the airbag went off. Okay, well good, it looks like it's installing. Probably will require a restart or something afterwards, so let's just um, see how much better this thing runs with video drivers and find some sound drivers for it, too. Hmm, time got all messed up. Must be in the wrong time zone or something. Well, here's one thing that definitely needs to be improved. You can't restart the system straight out of Windows. You have to log off first and then uh, clicky click, uh, click. Uh, what do we do? Oh, okay, all right, now we get that little on-off switch thing. Shut down and restart. Too many steps. Windows 7, you just do start, restart the machine. You can't have, you can't have lo mandatory log-offs before, um, before you can restart the machine. Uh, technically, maybe I could do that through the task manager, and but what do I really want to control alt delete just to restart the machine every time? Oops, I almost blew away my um, my install of zone alarm here. Ah, one of the big problems with everybody being used to going down and clicking a start menu button, a start button, is that if you're used to it, you're going to go down, you're going to click, you're going to accidentally click the window, you're accidentally going to just going to click the window, the first window you have open. That little line right there, can I possibly move, oh, unlock the taskbar. Uh, I can't really move it, uh, shoot, lock the taskbar. That's a problem, because you have to go all the way down to the corner. You have to dart to the corner to have the little start thing open up, and then you can go back into the start screen. So, how many times are people going to be clicking their, uh, how many times are people going to be clicking their first icon when they, you know, because they're so used to that start menu. Where's that desktop button again? Uh, yeah. Hey, where'd it go? Well, the good, oh, there it is. Yeah, I almost forgot. Good news is I can just click down in the corner again to make the start thing go away. Click. Click, 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 pretty much. Anyways, there's where a clock problem is coming from. It sets itself to Pacific time automatically. Change time zone to US Eastern. Voila. This version of Force Field is for 64-bit computers and you have a th what? 32-bit? I'm running, this should be a 64-bit OS. 32-bit? That can't... Um, this ain't right. Properties. Windows 8 Consumer Preview System Type 64-bit Operating System. Shoot! I think we got a glitch. I think we got a glitch. <laughs> oh, wait, well, it did install Zone Alarm, but that Force Field 64 thing that thought this was a 32-bit machine? Uh, oh, yeah, here we go. Now it tells me this program has compatibility issues. Run the program without getting help. Okay, so maybe I won't be able to use the firewall to its fullest potential, but at least it started, sort of. <laughs> Update now. Anyways. Okay, sound drivers are downloading at the paltry speed of 25k per second. That is ridiculous. I don't know what it is with these slow creative downloads these days, but ah, what are you going to do? So after that big, long 20-minute download, this is the result. The Windows operating system running on this computer is not supported by this product.
Okay then, looks like we have to switch to onboard audio. Unbelievable. Okay, well we already know that restarting this machine is going to have an extra step with this OS. Let's see what Control-Alt-Delete does. And da -da 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 -da. Sign out. Oh, so you, see, you can't shut down the machine from here either. Let's try Task Manager. Okay, more... Okay, this is Task Manager. More details. Oh, okay, that's more of what I'm used to. What do we got here? Ooh, CPU, memory, disk, network. Sweet, it monitors the bandwidth so you can see which programs you have installed are phoning home, but there is nothing in any of these menus to restart the computer. Are they trying to make this as hard as possible? Let's see what happens if I just push the button. Oh, yeah, cool. They kept that functionality at least. Okay, so there's a quick way to shut the machine down that way. Just push the button. Uh, this operating system needs more work. Definitely. Okay, we're back, and the Azalea onboard audio chip has been enabled, but I'm still seeing unknown devices. These might be from the television card. Let's see what we have for sound controllers. Oh, okay. AMD high-definition audio and high-definition audio. But is there any sound? Not... Ah, finally, some life. Sounds similar to the Windows 7 stuff. Of course, this is Windows 7 with some extra toys at this point. Close that out. Let's get back into the control panel and see what we got for sound setups here. Sound. Ooh, sounds. Okay, good. So it is detecting uh, high definition audio device. That's the HDMI port on the video card. And high definition audio device would be the onboard audio on the motherboard, which is sad because now it means I can't use this as a media station while I'm running this OS. Uh, Windows default. Oh, they only have the regular Windows ones, they don't have the glitzy ones. Play Windows startup sound. See if that's any different. Let's turn that on. And is there an exit Windows sound in here anywhere? Uh, let's see here. Um, let's see. No, it doesn't look like it. Probably because, probably because that's gone. Actually, you don't actually exit directly from Windows anymore unless you push the button. Speaking of which. Uh, no, go back to the power control. Let's go back to the uh, power control panel here. How do we make this stuff appear again? Oh, corners and then settings. Let me see if I let me see if they brought back something. One big thing that I did not like about Windows 7 was they took away the ask option when you push the button. Okay, first we want power saver. We never want these things to be energy hogs. Advanced power settings, require password and away, hard drives, turns off, desktop background, wireless adapters. Sleepy power buttons and lid, power button action, setting. Oh no, they still haven't brought it back yet. You have to pick sleep, hibernate, or shut down. There's no ask, you know, and it pops open a window asking you what you want to do. I really like that in Windows XP. Uh, it's too bad they got rid of it afterwards. Pro ooh, processor power management, that's nice. So you actually have, you actually can control that as well. Sweet. Close that, close that. Now, of course, we got to shut this machine down the hard way to hear what the startup sound is going to be. So, how do we get out of here again? That's a problem. I should not be asking these questions. We go to Multimedia J, sign out. Yeah, there is no shutdown because there is no more shutting down. Something else I found out is that you kind of lift this up like this, just throw it up top. Probably a gesture on a touch screen or something like that. So, let's go and let's restart. Actually, you uh, yeah, restart. And we'll come back and let's see what kind of startup sound it has. Fish. I don't know, you know, Microsoft just changed the logo for Windows. I'm surprised they're not using it here. Let's see ya. Now, when does it make the startup noise? Does it make it when this thing pops up or when I sign on? Alright, volume is up on the speakers. Let's see what happens. How would I know? <laughs> it's so it's probably early enough in the development that of course Windows 8 is going to use Windows 7 sounds. Okie dokie.